I'm here in Toronto with Yostina of Trollfest. They're currently touring across North America on an incredible package that I don't think any of you should miss. I'm going to put the tour dates on the description of this video. Uh, but we're here to talk about uh, Pink Flamingos, Trollfest, sure uh, anything mm. that's on your mind. So let's start off with the tour. You, you've been on the road for a little bit. Yep. Uh, you have a little bit of a taste of what this tour perhaps is going to offer the band. Uh, mm. wh how do you think things are going so far? Uh, so far, it's, uh, it's going very well, to, uh, to be honest. We're, uh, uh, we're thoroughly enjoying ourselves. Uh, the crowd seems to be enjoying it too, so it's a double whammy. I is it a, a tour for you that it's important to be successful? Every tour is important <coughs> to be successful, yeah. but touring in North America with all the costs and everything that yep. goes into it, uh, do you feel extra pressure in order for the tour to be successful? Uh, sort of yes there uh, there there is a little bit of added pressure just you know because you, uh, you don't necessarily want to come home and then find out that you have a whole lot less money than you had uh, before you left uh, it's not necessarily a good thing um, so th yeah there's a little bit of pressure on that but uh, on the other hand with uh, with the way the music industry works these days you know it's almost impossible to make a living out of it anyway so all of us in the band have our uh, regular day jobs that we're going to go back to and uh, <clears throat> like that's our main source of income and that's also part of the reason why we don't do this uh, quite as much as we would have loved to but you know it's uh, uh, transporting seven people around the world to uh, to prance around in pink costumes <laughs> is uh, is not easy. Uh, you no, know, or it's easy doing it. It's not too easy to get paid for <laughs> for doing it. Uh, Those are two very get, different things. Get properly paid because we d we do get paid, but uh, you know, again, we've sort of uh, shot ourselves in the knee by by being seven people in the band. I'm I'm regretting not making it a solo project every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm joking. Uh, you know, when it comes to being a successful tour, it, it, are there parameters that you look at uh, in order to define what that success would be? Are you looking at crowds? Are you looking at merch sales? Like, what are you looking at? Uh, all of the above. Uh, obviously, like, financially uh, has a lot uh, to say and is also a very sort of good indicator of, uh, of what the rest of the, the tour is as well. Uh, seeing as, you know, if, if it's uh, sold out, uh, chances are you will sell a lot more merchandise than if it's uh, not even half full, uh, just because there are more people there who, uh, who will buy it. Uh, but then on the other hand, there is also uh, um, something I th think a whole bunch of the uh, uh, higher-ups in the bin business uh, might not uh, be uh, entirely connected to anymore, is the... Um, is the impact uh, it has on those who see the show, you know. So let's say you have a venue that can take uh, 500 people, but only 100 people show up. So in, in a sense, you've sort of lost 400 people. But then in the, on the other hand, if you manage to make a big enough impact on the 100 people that are actually there, so that they will go out and tell everyone they know about your show and how everyone should see that first chance they get, then that has a value too, but it's very hard to measure that value. The only way you can see it is if you tour a second time and then, holy shit, last tour, all the venues were half full. Now all the venues are sold out, for instance. So, but it becomes like sort of, um, uh, I don't know, an element of success that uh, uh, doesn't become apparent until uh, some time has passed, I suppose. I, isn't it almost mandatory to have a second run, considering the visa costs? And, uh, do, are you guys <laughs> thinking about uh, <laughs> tipping your toes in yeah, the water yeah, with yeah, the first yeah. one and then completely doing the plunge with the second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, well, uh, actually, we uh, we got really lucky uh, this time around because we, uh, we had um, uh, 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 two of our fans uh, booked us to come to play at their uh, ring warming ceremony uh, and uh, yeah so they basically covered the cost for a work visa so th that was the first run so in that sense this tour is the second run uh, but uh, we uh, we really really hope it's not going to be nine years again before we get to play here uh, a second time and and we are hoping to 
there have been some talks about doing something something uh, again next year um uh but yeah i i guess we'll see it's the the whole um, the whole industry seems to be in a bit of an uproar and uh, yeah things haven't quite settled uh, after the pandemic uh, and uh, you know yeah as you say you know uh, costs are at an all-time high mm -hmm. for uh, for uh, for everybody these days so um, not only is it really expensive to drive around uh, but it's also kind of uh, uh, or yeah you could easily end up feeling shitty um, asking for money from your fans to come see the show you know like five times a year everybody's struggling financially and then you're there ah oh, you gotta come see my show have some fun you know spend all your money on keeping me alive uh, <laughs> it's uh i don't know uh <laughs> there, yeah there's a there's a fun balance there too yeah precisely there a, a sense of decorum might be in order i don't know um, it lacks these days in a lot of people so i'm i'm surprised yeah. that Trollfest is putting decorum uh, <laughs> first and foremost. <laughs> Somehow, I don't picture that as being like a, a key a key value within within Trollfest. Ah, no. Whether or not it's value, uh, I don't know. But it it it, it, uh, it is something we 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 do think about from time to time. Um, but yeah, mainly uh, it, that's one thing. And another thing is that it's uh, it, it, most of that stuff is actually not really up to us. You know, the, uh, if the venue books us, we will we will come and play. If uh, if we get our expenses covered, we're happy to go almost anywhere to do a show because you know that's uh, um, this uh, this is our uh, main hobby, I, uh, I guess, as uh, semi professional musicians. Uh, but you know, th uh, this is what uh, um, uh, yeah tours like this is what keeps me going through. The rest of the year, you know, when shitty days at work or uh, shitty days at home or both or both plus some more, <laughs> uh, you know, the you need a little candle at the at the end of the tunnel or uh, or a memory to warm yourself uh, by. And uh, um, tours like these are chock full of those, uh, both with, you know, interactions we have with fans, cool people we meet from uh, from one town to another. Uh, and not to mention um, uh, seeing the uh, seeing the positivity a lot of people get out of our shows. You know, the, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's genuinely heartwarming when you see people light up, become a little bit more happy and laugh, and you sort of, you know, you can sort of see their shoulders uh, sink a little bit, and the whole attitude relaxes a bit more, and you know, uh, it's a very very good feeling and. Uh, and it's also a very rewarding feeling. I, uh, I think I, the first time I heard it was from a drummer called Marco Miniman, who's a fucking beast. Uh, but he said, uh, basically, if you bring energy to the people, the people will give you energy back. And that's actually an upward spiral instead of a downward spiral. So, you know, you feed some energy to the people, the people give you energy back, then you can feed more energy to the people. And then everybody it's leaves. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's glorious. It's, uh, it's why people seem so insane when they come out of uh, religious uh, ceremony meetings. You know? I, and I think a religious ceremony and a troll fest show, they have a lot of things in common. There's a little bit of a, of a Venn diagram where those two meet. <laughs> definitely. That's... Uh, uh, it's definitely a big <laughs> crossover there. Uh, and, and, and I was just in Norway, and I have to ask you this, because after spending one week in Oslo, I didn't see one single pink flamingo. So, uh, and I know the last time you guys toured in North America, there were no pink flamingos either. No. So where did that idea originate, and why did it stick? I, I'm not saying it's a uh, bad yeah, idea, I'm yeah, just saying why yeah, did yeah, it stick? Yeah. Well, uh, it's usually what we, uh, what we often end up doing is we... Um, you know, because of the, the whole nature with the band, with uh, with the costumes and uh, you know, changing of image and uh, changing of uh, visual style uh, from album to album, uh, we uh, we tend to do like uh, when we're out touring, like now. You know, we'll uh, 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 you know, there's a lot of waiting, uh, waiting for sound check, waiting for sound check to be finished, waiting for the show waiting 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 
So there's a lot of just sitting around and goofing around, uh, trying to make each other laugh. And uh, yeah, I think actually both the uh, Captain Chaos album uh, and the the Pink Flamingo album, the the concept was basically born on tour when. Uh, you know, had a late night, uh, late bus call, so we were all sitting up drinking, talking shit, and uh, and enjoying ourselves. And then I can't remember who it was, but somebody said Flamingo Overlord, uh, and we all lost our shit uh, <laughs> just because it's so oxymoronic to have a Flamingo Overlord. It's uh, it doesn't add up in any way, censorship. Uh, so. Um, yeah, we laughed it out. We laughed about that a lot that night, uh, and then everybody goes to bed. And then the next morning, you know that it sort of becomes a bit of an internal joke, and then that thing kept running throughout the rest of the tour. And then at the end of the tour, we were just like, "I fucking, I, I still find that shit funny." And uh, it's and it, it, we've been talking about it for two weeks, and it still brings me a giggle. Let's fucking do it, and uh, yeah. So, and here we are. And here we are. <laughs> no, I, I don't know if you saw this story or heard this story. There's uh, there's a guy that uh, uh, identified as a deer, and apparently he got shot in the woods by a group of hunters because they actually thought he was a deer. Considering you're touring through the U.S. and they love their guns, uh, are, are you fearful for your life that somebody will take you for a real flamingo? <laughs> well, uh, I would be if I did don the costume and walk outside. But uh, so far we've... Uh, We've tried to keep the costumes to uh, within the venues, uh, but you you never know. You know, all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, who knows? You know, Uncle Jimbo and Ned from South Park might show up, <laughs> and then they haven't quite collected the northern North Norway uh, uh, pink flamingo species before. So you know. I have to shoot one to put put a head on the wall. Yeah, it, it's so. it's uh, almost like limited edition. I mean, like yeah. a, a, a Norwegian pink flamingo that that has a metal show and and is on a tour. I don't think you can find many of those. No, I, I think the the general population is about down to seven now, and they're all male, so it's going to be the last edition. Uh, uh, coming mm. from Norway, a, a, a country that is constantly associated with black metal, and I can attest for that after spending a week there, mm. uh, is it difficult for a band like Trollfest, who uh, changes, not necessarily sound, but changes almost identity from record to record, is not afraid of, of going in any direction that you guys feel like it's appropriate? Is it is it difficult to uh, not only exist, but to thrive in an environment that perhaps goes in a completely different direction? Uh, well, uh, I think both yes and no. Uh, yes, because uh, as you're alluding to, if I understand correctly, there there's a whole bunch of black metal police people in in Norway who are like, you know, mainly come to shows to check if your, uh, if your distorted guitar settings are appropriately satanic. Uh, if you do uh, enough horns, uh, if you use the right detergent so that you have the right shade of black on your clothing, uh, whether or not your roots can be showing, you know. Uh, you don't uh, have that problem. Uh, no, not here, but maybe here after oh, a while. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, there, there, there is a whole bunch of people uh, who, uh, who are very, very serious uh, about the seriousness of their music. And <clears throat> it's, uh, well, we've always kind of found that a l little bit silly, to be honest, because it's fucking music. I mean, you can take it as seriously as you like, but at the end of the day, it's just music. You know, if, uh, if you play uh, the Satanic Mass by band, uh, Satan's not going to come into your living room. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just music, you know. So in that sense, it's uh, I find it silly that people can uh, make or uh, put that much of importance and emphasis on the whole fucking thing, and especially when it comes down to like it's it's music, so the visual image and the visual impact should surely be secondary to the music. Uh, but then you find time and time again that uh, 
a lot of people are almost more into the image and the looks of things than the sound of things. Uh, because that's the other way. Like, the Trollfest music is serious, seriously serious music. I mean, we do spend a lot of time uh, on writing our songs and on our arranging our songs. Uh, we... Um, uh, we have a shitload of uh, different instruments, uh, you know, the, it, it's very, very thought out compositions uh, with uh, uh, with fear of uh, tooting my own horn here. But uh, I mean, it, it, all the guys I have with me in the band are fucking top notch players, you know, uh, uh, they're all operating on on a f fairly skilled level that you'd be struggle to find mm -hmm. you know uh, w yeah we uh, recently had auditions to find a new bass player and you know we were lucky enough to find someone that was way better than the one we had uh, like uh, technically uh, uh, but on the other hand it was you know finding some like the last time we needed a new bass player it, it was almost impossible to find someone who uh, who were capable the, the, there's of doing a little bit of a, of a theme here with the bass players what's what's going <laughs> on there it's, yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> well we've actually we've had equally many drummers although uh, only two members have been steady members uh, whereas uh, bookin who's with us now he's sort of he's been a part of the family since um, 2012 13 maybe uh so but he's been sort of uh uh, he's been singing with us uh, on every record because he has a beautiful voice. Uh, he's been playing a little bit of percussion on a lot of the records. He also did a couple of tours with us as a percussionist. Um, and he's also done quite a few gigs and now this entire tour where he's uh, stepping in on the drum kit. So, but yeah, there has been some, some lineup changes uh, throughout the, uh, the career. And uh, yeah, again, I, th I think it's... Uh, wide variety of reasons but uh, again it's uh, but the main thing for you guys is the quality like you were saying before yep. the quality of the sound is important and just yep. because the music is fun that doesn't mean the well, work that goes behind it is less no, important or that's the or yeah that's the thing i was uh, slowly uh, trying to uh, to get myself to say uh, is that basically like the, the only thing uh, uh, the only thing that's serious about Trollfest is the music. Image and everything else uh, is uh, uh, more to give, our, give, us, uh, give ourselves a good laugh, so to speak. Uh, that, you know, that's why we keep changing the costumes. Uh, that's why we do the makeup uh, before going on stage, because it becomes a little bit of a ritual. And also, it doesn't grow stale. Like, you don't get sick of it. Uh, you don't get weary. And you, you don't get that. Um, I've, I used to, this used to piss me off in uh, all the bands I used to be a part of when uh, someone would come in and have a riff or a melody or a beat or whatever, and uh, check this out, check this out. I've made something cool, and then you listen to it, and one guy, always one guy in the band, who goes like, "Yeah, that's pretty cool, but it's I don't think it's our style," and I always want to say. So our style is not cool. Then are we supposed to come in with shitty things? Is that <laughs> is that our style, or uh, or is it just like are we are we seriously throwing away cool shit because it's not part of the right part of cool? That's uh, always seemed stupid to me, um, which is also part of the reason why we're sort of we like experimenting with uh, a whole bunch of different genres and. You know, trying out new musical avenues and all of that is mostly to to keep it uh, fresh and entertaining for ourselves. And uh, yeah, we hope we're not the only ones who sort of can appreciate the fact that it's um, you know ACDC is already doing ACDC, uh, and they've been doing ACDC for a long, long time, and they do it really, really well. And you'd be a fucking moron to expect ACDC to come out with a Bossa Nova album at any point. Or a prog record. Or, or a prog record. It's it's going to be ACDC for as long as ACDC exists. Uh, but they're already doing that. So do we really need all the bands to do that? You know, find 
find one tiny sliver of a thing that they feel is cool and then just rearrange that one thing over and over and over and over again. It, it seems a little bit uh, seems a little bit lazy to me. Uh, and and also I, I, I can't understand how they uh, how it doesn't bore them to death <laughs> you know it, it doing that for for 20 years of just you well, know but uh, but I think I, you I don't know, your maybe. guys are uh, at least that's my perception I think you guys are able to change evolve pretty much do whatever it is that you want to do because you've also been able to train train in quotes your 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 fan base to be able to appreciate that because True. you know a lot of fan bases are not necessarily as accommodating no, no, as, no. as troll fest fan base i i think uh, you're definitely uh, right there uh, although but we do obviously uh, get the occasional comment of like oh i wish you guys would have stopped uh, evolving at record number three that's my favorite record why can't you just make records like record number three or number five or number four or you know, uh, so there are some of those as well, and I I, I get it. Uh, I mean, I, I have bands that I love too, where I you know I, I fucking love love it when they did this shit, and then they tried doing that stuff, and this I didn't like at all. I wish they could have done something more along those lines. I did. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I I I feel that too, um, and uh, obviously that's a risk. Uh, you take by changing all the time, uh, but I uh, I like to imagine that uh, by doing it that way you can um, uh, by doing it that way there is a much greater chance of having holy shit this is the coolest thing I've ever heard wow 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 I wish they would do that all the time ah fuck the next album was shit I didn't like that uh, I hope they never do that again and then a th third album comes out and then they're like holy shit they found a whole new thing that i can get behind now so now i have two favorite albums in two favorite style or two different styles and you know it's um i don't know but i imagine that there's uh, a bigger potential for uh, uh, uh for uh, uh, strokes of genius uh, when you uh, uh, when you don't try to confine uh, what you're doing too much or, or try to confine it in a different way than, for instance, you know, we're only going to play thrash metal or we're only going to play death metal and it's going to be exactly like it was in the 1980s uh, or uh, I'm going to do German power metal uh, like I've summarized the entire 80s uh, or... Uh, yeah, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, I think it's a lot harder to uh, to be brilliant twice uh, when you're technically doing the same thing over and over again. But uh, by all means, arrest me on this. I'm nowhere near an authority. I'm uh, no. It's just a, a there. There are people who have done exactly what I'm sitting here saying you shouldn't do and earned a fuck ton of money. So for me, who doesn't earn any money doing this <laughs> at all and sit here and explain how it should be done or what should be do or how you should do it is a bit of a... Yes, but then again, in, in about two hours' time, you're going to be on stage wearing a pink flamingo costume. So like, let's put things Even in perspective. Even less reason to take me seriously. <laughs> it's uh, clearly that I should behind, be behind bars <laughs> or uh, in, in, a, in a glass cage of some sort. And confined somewhere. Confined <laughs> yes. somewhere. Some uh, sort of confined space. Uh, Justin, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. To squeeze me in, in between sound checks and Dude. going on stage. Uh, no uh, worries, it's always man. a pleasure talking to you. I always have, have a great time talking to you. The last time I talked to you was during rehearsal. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Did a, we did an interview while you guys were rehearsing. Right, right, so right. that was super yeah. hectic, but a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this yeah. one, not less hectic, but equally fun. Absolutely, man. So always a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. Dude. Enjoy the tour. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and for those watching, once again, the description of the video, check it out. All the tour dates will be there. Don't miss these pink flamingos, man. They're, they're a dying breed, really, like the dodo. Like, I went to Norway, I saw none. I had to come back to North America to find these guys. Yep. So.